All right, what's up, everybody? Back with another episode of Everyday Hoops. Yes, we're back. Uh, today, we're just going to be talking about the Western Conference, and I'm going to be predicting what seeding everyone ends up in the Western Conference. Now, there's a month left in the NBA season, and the Western Conference has been crazy the entire year. The play-in has been insane. There's like 13 teams fighting for 10 spots. It's been crazy, so I'm going to just try to predict the West and how the seeding ends up and see if I'm right or not, you know? Uh, before we do that, um, thanks for the views on the videos recently and the shorts, really appreciate it. Um, so let people over to the main channel really appreciate that. Uh, if you like the content, subscribe, you know, like, turn on notifications, do all that stuff. It really helps out a lot. I'd really appreciate it. And let's not, not waste any more of your time. Let's get right into it. All right, we'll start off easy. Uh, the number one seed, the Never Nuggets are winning the West in the regular season, at least. <laughs> They're going to be the top team in the Western Conference. Uh, they're seven games above second place, Sacramento. Uh, they've been number one basically most of the season. Uh, they've kind of got away from the rest of the pack of all the craziness in the Western Conference. They're going to finish number one. They're going to be number one. They're probably winning like 55, 56, even a little bit more games. Uh, right now they're 46 and 20. Uh, they got, what, like 14-ish games left? Yeah, yeah they can kind of just chill out through the rest of the rest of the season they're kind of locked in there already unless they go on like a 10 game losing streak which probably isn't going to happen but yeah the nuggets are number one for sure let's get that out of the way already and now we can get really get into it <laughs> number two this was going to be locked in memphis it should have been locked in memphis but then you know a lot of stuff happened around the grizzlies john morant doing all those things some um, injuries just inconsistent play uh, so number two, I got the Sacramento Kings finishing number two. Uh, they, at first, were just a feel-good story. You know, they're climbing up there a little bit. They're stuck in that three and four spot. But then, after All-Star break, they've come out hot. They were, what, I think five and one, six and one. So far, since coming out of All-Star break, they looked amazing. Had some high-scoring games. They have the best offense in the league. They've been incredible. De'Aaron Fox, Demonis Sabonis have been All-Stars. Um, and I think they're finishing number two, especially with the Grizzlies falling. They're on the Grizzlies are on a three game losing streak. Sacramento can get up there and finish two. That's insane. The Sacramento Kings, number two in the Western Conference after sixteen years of not even make touching the playoffs. And now they're about to finish number potentially number two. I think they're gonna finish number two. Um Yeah, and they prove that they're an actual team that you have to fear. You know, of course people are still aren't gonna take them super seriously because it's the Kings. But they're a team that definitely, you know, before the All-Star break, if you would have asked me if the Kings lose in the first round, I would have said 100%. They're going to lose in the first round. Now, you know, after the All-Star break, it really kind of convinced me, like, hey, the Kings are actually here, you know, and uh, <laughs> they definitely can make it out of the first round. Maybe even if all things go well, maybe make a conference finals run. Who knows? I mean, their offense is amazing. It's really going to come down to can they get stops in the fourth quarter. That's all there, because all their games are going to be high-scoring games. They're going to put up 120, 130 points, because they have a really good half-court offense. They're not just a fast-running pace team. They also have some half-court offense. It's literally just going to be, can they get stops when they need it? And if they can do that, then they can win. But yeah, I got their number two. Number three in the Western Conference, I'm going with the Phoenix Suns, finishing number three in the Western Conference. Again, the Grizzlies are falling. They're probably going to lose some games. You know, the end of the year, Jaws going to be out for the next four-ish games. Steven Adams is probably going to be out the rest of the regular season. So that's a perfect gateway for the Suns to sneak into number three. Now, the Suns aren't safe either in there because Kevin Durant uh, slipped on the court last night and he's having an MRI today that potentially could be out for a little, for about two-ish weeks, which is a big part of the season. Uh, he was just playing well. The Suns are on a four-game winning streak. They're 4-0 with him, or well, technically 3-0, but 4-0 because they won yesterday. Because uh, Evan Booker has been amazing ever since KD's gotten there. But yeah, the Suns look well. They're playing well. Devin Booker's playing at an amazing level. They got the guys like Josh Okoge, uh Damian Lee, um, Torrey Craig. Those guys are playing really well right now as well. You know, um, so if Chris Paul and DeAndre can just be solid, the Suns, they're only two games behind Memphis. They can jump in at number three, and I think they're going to jump in at number three. You know, I think that would be a really good spot for them especially compared to early in the year when they're out of the play-in at one point so yeah number four in the west this is where i have the grizzlies 
I kind of said it already, you know, Ja is going to be out for a while. Steven Adams is going to be out the rest of the regular season. They've already been losing. they got some games left against some good teams. And the teams that are like through four, right now four through seven, are really hungry. So they're going to come out playing desperate kind of and playing really hungry. So I think the Grizzlies probably going to be at number four. I think they won too many games to drop down to that playing spot unless they literally go on like a eight-game losing streak and some or something. But I think the farthest they're probably going to drop is four. Because four and five right now, the Suns are four, the Warriors are five. That's a three-game difference. And I don't think the Grizzlies are going to lose every game the rest of the year. They're probably not going to. So they're probably going to probably be four. Um, yeah, it's just really tough, man. Because the Grizzlies were on track to be number two, cool in the West, win the first round, get to the second round, maybe have some trouble. Now they could potentially pull the four. Now they're going to have to potentially play a, a Warrior or a Clipper team in the first round. You know, and who knows when Josh's coming back. You know, he might not even be back for the playoffs. And then Steven Adams as well. Who knows if he's going to be back or not. You know, so, yeah, it's just a really tough situation. For him. Especially also losing Brandon Clark, one of their key bench pieces for the rest of the season. With a torn Achilles. Yeah, just things are not going Memphis's way. Yeah, so I think they're end up four. On number five in the West, I got the LA Clippers. Um, the Clippers, we all know, Russell Westbrook. Went to LA, they made all the moves to the deadline, and then they lost four in a row. Um, but they won back to back games. They beat the Raptors last night on ESPN. Um, and I think this is the Clippers are a very streaky team. They've been like that the whole year. They started the year off on a bad, and then they went back up, and then they went down, and then they went back. They're a very streaky team. So I feel like after that four game losing streak, I won't be surprised if the Clippers now go on a five game win streak and jump back up. That's just how the Clippers are. Uh, Kawhi is playing at an amazing level right now. Paul George kind of got unlocked a little bit after that 40-point game against the Grizzlies the other day. I feel like I kind of woke him up. Westbrook's been playing amazing ever since he got to L.A. with the Clippers. He's been incredible. Um, they don't have Norman Powell, unfortunately, who was in six man of the year considerations. Um, but I think the Clippers are going to go on a run near the end of the year, and I think they're go they're going to be five. I'm, I see them five in the West. We got a Grizzly Clipper matchup, which would be actually be a nice matchup. Number six, the final West team before the play-in. I got the Warriors. I got the Warriors in there as the sixth spot. Right now they're five. Um, they really made it out, kind of. Um, they still really struggle on the road. You know, they're still one of the worst road teams. But Steph just got back. Um, you know, and I think they're gonna finish the year okay, solid enough to where they going to lock in a top six five or did it at the all-star break they're going to finish top six and i think I, they're going to finish top six um the only question i have no problem with them at home it's just on the road they just force they they have a lot of turnovers they just make a lot of turnovers and foul a lot and don't get to the free throw line a lot which is very interesting for a veteran team you know that's one that's been a dynasty over the past like eight nine years that they're the ones turning the ball over and fouling and can't win on the road it's very odd this season but I think the Warriors are going to turn it up at the right time. And I think they're finished sixth in the West. Now we get to the play-in. My play-in matchup for seven and eight. For seven, I got the Mavericks. Uh, Luka did get hurt last night. The thigh. And they lost on ESPN to the Pelicans. But it just came out that the MRI is clean. Luka's probably going to miss maybe a game or two. With a little bit of a discomfort. But nothing serious. Which is a big bullet dodged for them. Uh, Kyrie's been playing pretty well. They got some contributions from Tim Hardaway and Christian Wood. Even though... Tim Hardaway hit six threes, and the next week who hit one. Um, yeah, I think they're gonna finish seven. I don't know. I don't. I don't think. You know, the Luke and Kyrie pairing has been amazing in terms of win and loss. I mean, they've both looked good in their moments. They just haven't gotten wins, of course, because their role players are very iffy. But I think they're gonna finish in the plan. And honestly, that'd be really fun. A Luke and Kyrie one game plan. They're definitely gonna win the plan. I mean. They also have the advantage of being a higher seven or eight. So if you're seven or eight, you even if you lose the first game, you get another game to make it in. And I don't think Luca and Kyrie are losing two games in a row or two games in a row in that second. Of course, they lost two games in a row already, but I mean, two games in a row that actually means something. I don't think they're going out like that. So I got them at seven and at eight. Um, this is very tough as well, but I got the Minnesota Timberwolves in there. Uh, I think right now. Tim Wolves and Mavericks actually tied for seven and eight, and they got a game and a half lead over the nine and ten spots. 
So I think as long as the Timberwolves don't go on a big losing streak at the end of the season and they just stay around 500-ish, they're probably locked into that 7 or 8 spot. I'll go ahead and also, unless one of the 9 or 10 or other seats make a huge run, go on like an 8-game win- winning streak and jump in there. But I think it's safe to say that the, t- probably be, the Timberwolves are probably going to be in the top 8 in the West. Um, they've really bounced back after having a horrible start to the season. Um, ever since 2023, they've looked a lot better. Anthony Edwards made the All-Star team. He's been great. Guys a contribution from Nas Reed and Jalen Noel and Kyle Anderson and Jaden McDaniels. Um, yeah, so they're probably going to finish in the plan. Uh, will they win the plan? That's very tough. You know, um, very tough to say. But I think they're going to finish in the plan, which is honestly a lot better than what people probably thought they were going to do, especially at the beginning of the year when they were like, what, 11, 12th? And they just look really bad. My final plan, the 9 and 10 matchup, uh, I got the Lakers and Pelicans, both making it, which are the teams that are now. So kind of a little bit of a boring finish, but here's why. I got the Lakers because they're on a two-game winning streak. They're in the plan. AD has been playing phenomenal. If you haven't watched yesterday's video, go watch it, the AD video um he's been amazing he's carrying this team without lebron d'angelo russell set to come back the role players guys like austin reeves and troy brown and malik beasy jerry Vanderbilt have been great they've been some very solid teams and they just look better they look energized they look like they're ready to make this run so i think the lakers are stuck in the plan right i think they're locked into playing i say if i had to bet on who made the plan the nine ten spots out of the Lakers, Pelicans, Thunder, Trailblazers, Jazz. I'll put most of my money on the Lakers. Um, because I just think they're ready for it. They've, they've been waiting for this moment the entire year. They took at 13 for like three months. And now they finally made the run. They're finally in there. And I think they're going to do anything in their power to stay afloat in this. And I think if AD is playing the way AD is playing right now, they can, they can stay. They can stay in there. I think they will. And then the Pelicans, a uh, very unfortunate season for the Pelicans. Zion's probably not coming back, which really sucks. Because um, he was playing at an MVP level. Um, the last time I seen him play was just about, what, early January, I think. Um, and they've really struggled ever since him and Brandon Ingram went out. They went from 2 to, like, 11 in, like, a span of two weeks. Because that's how close the Western Conference is. But I think they're going to make a good playing push. Um, Brandon Ingram did get hurt last night. That's tough. But I think they have the pieces enough to win a few games. You know, they have C.J. McCollum, who's been in situations like these. Guys like, you know, Herb Jones, Trey Murphy, Jose Alvarado. Um, they've been very solid all year, and I think they're going to keep them afloat. Valanchunas is still very solid. Um, yeah, I just think, I just really like this Pelicans team, and I feel like they have a lot of fight and toughness in them. So I think they're going to make that push to make the 10th seed in the plan. Um, now the one team out of Thunder, Trebles, and Jazz that are also fighting for the plan, the one team I would watch out for is Portland because they have Damian Lillard. And Damian Lillard... Might he's been on an insane streak since February started? That haven't won, that hasn't won that many games, but they're still again only one game away from the plan. I would watch for Portland. I don't know. I just got a feeling that Portland and Damian Lillard will pull something out of out of his hat, go in there, and just go on a win streak by himself. Again, they need the entire team because Dame's been playing a phenomenal. Dame's done his part. It's just the rest of the team is very, you know, iffy. You know, you don't know what you're going to get from anybody. Um, it's literally just kind of Dame dragging them throughout the rest of the regular season. Um, I would watch out for Portland. OKC, I just don't know. OKC's been very injured and inconsistent the second half of the year, which is really disappointing because I thought they were going to make the play-in push. And then the Jazz, I don't think the Jazz would want to make the play-in. <laughs> the Jazz are like, we don't want to make the play-in. You guys got it. We just want to sit here and let our players develop. Um, Yeah, so that that's it. That's all I got. That's me predicting the Western Conference, the, stand, the seedings. We'll see how right I am by the end of the year. Probably not anywhere close to right, but who cares, right? Um, yeah, but again, if you guys like the content, subscribe, like, turn on notifications, all that stuff. Um, I'd really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'm also at Twitter at Everyday Hoops 10. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.